These Shallow Graves, the idea for the book, came about in a bit of a roundabout way. I had finished um, some novels for young adults, and these novels were very much inspired by ghosts from the past. Sitting with ghosts in a room day after day, week after week, year after year, begins to take its toll after a while. So I decided I needed a break from the ghosts. Actually, I was all done with the ghosts. I wanted to do something new. Then something happens, which happens to me every now and again. A dead man showed up in my head. He um, was lying in a pine coffin. He had strange markings on his face, um, long dark hair, and he was wearing clothes from a different time. I thought, oh no, here we go again. He opened his eyes and he started telling me his story and I was hooked. I was off and gone. Um, he took me back into the 19th century to a place I love, to um, the Gilded Age in New York, the 1890s and he started telling me a story. Josephine Monfort stared at the newly mounded grave in front of her and at the wooden cross marking it. This is the one you're after. Kinch, Flynn the gravedigger said, pointing at the name painted on the cross. He died on Tuesday. Tuesday, Joe thought, four days ago. Time enough for the rot to start and the stink. I'll be wanting my money now, Flynn said. Joe put her lantern down. She fumbled notes out of her coat pocket and counted them into Flynn's hand. You get caught out here, you never saw me, you hear, girl? Joe nodded. Flynn pocketed his money and walked off into the darkness. Moonlight spilled over the rows of graves and the looming towers of the asylum. A wail rose on the night, high and piercing. And suddenly, Joe's courage failed her. Step aside, Joe, we'll do it. Oscar and me, Eddie said. He was standing across from her on the other side of the grave. He said nothing more as she met his gaze. He didn't need to. The challenge in his eyes spoke volumes. How did this happen? How did I get here? Joe asked herself. She didn't want to do this. She wanted to be home, safe inside her Gramercy Square townhouse. She wished she'd never met Eddie Gallagher, the tailor, Madame Esther, Fairy Fay. Most of all, she wished she'd never laid eyes on the man buried below her. Wait by the vault, go back, Eddie said, not unkindly. Joe laughed, go back, how? There was no going back. Not to her old life of drawing rooms and dances, not to Miss Sparkwell's school, not to her friends or to Bram. It had all gone too far. Joe, you wait by the vault, Eddie, Joe said crisply. Eddie snorted. He tossed a shovel at her. Joe flinched as she caught it, then started to dig.